Hey, it's Tim here. 23.3 is nearly out. Let's go through the coming soon page and find out what's coming in this release. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so 23.3 is coming soon, as Tableau like to say on this page. Um, this page came out uh, a couple of weeks ago. I'm a little late to the game, but um, I'm really keen to go through it. This is the second release since we had conference. And the interesting thing about this is that um, at conference, there was a whole pitch around uh, new capabilities, Tableau GPT, Tableau Pulse, and this concept of decoupling. I went through all of this in my keynote roundup. Check that out if you haven't seen that. And some of the things we saw at the conference are yet to be released. And so what's always interesting, a couple of releases after conference is to see what's actually shipping because of course, we've only got really one more release before I think they start saving features for the next conference. So this release and the next release will pretty much have everything we're gonna get this year. And then everything after that will probably be saved for availability at some point next year, just to give conference a bit of um, a bit of content that people can actually talk about and the, something the sales people can actually sell. So um, a little a bit behind the scenes there. So yeah, here we are with 23.3. Let's start going through this. Um, I'd like to do this before every release is out, before I even do the videos where I cover them. If you're new here, uh, don't forget that I make videos covering all of the features of Tableau as they release, the most prominent ones, not every single one. We're trying to address that problem very, very soon. But yes, I make videos covering most of the features that are released. And I have been for three uh, years. So go ahead and check those out. I have playlists for each of them. Let's start today with dynamic axis ranges. So um, this is actually quite nice because it comes off the back of dynamic axis titles, which was released a couple of releases ago. This essentially allows you to map the axis to a specific parameter. So as you select the data set, you can actually get the axis to change. Now, you could kind of simulate this with some um, capabilities around min and max values in parameters, um, but this is nice because this feels more native. And so it's really a, a follow on to the previous feature. Now, one question I have for you is this. I've been talking to a few people and I can't come to an opinion about whether it's better that Tableau releases all the features behind a capability in one go or if they drip feed these capabilities. A good example is Ask Data. Another example is the data model. When these were new features, they gave us features over maybe five or six releases. Would you prefer that at the end of that six release, you just got everything in one go then, so you could plan and organize how you deploy your features across your organization? Or do you prefer this sort of drip feeding? The interesting thing is, that with this drip feed approach, my opinion is that most people don't get the features until two years down the line, because in essence, every organization's sort of upgrade cycle means that they get the feature kind of when it's half baked and when it's half baked, you can't really do anything with it. So you actually get this lag effect, unless you're on Tableau Cloud where everything comes sort of in real time. And so in real terms, I just wonder if people hold off developing um, ways and best practice of using things until they feel a feature is sort of fully uh, realized. And as a result, Tableau think people aren't interested in the feature and they sort of start barking down the wrong tree. It's an interesting question. I don't have the data, of course. If you're at Tableau and you have the data in the telemetry, let me know, we can chat. But uh, <laughs> nonetheless, let me know what you think in the comments. Okay, let's go to the next feature, custom data labels. Now, I actually saw this in Tableau Online the other day when I was rummaging around, I realized that I was not a beta instance and this was already enabled. So I'll do a video on this very, very soon. It's a really nice capability. Essentially, it's building off the previous data sensitivity feature that was available in the previous release. This now gives you a place to manage these. So this will be great for admins who want to start to use this labeling across the platform. I think this is gonna need the data management add-on um, because the data sensitivity is part of the data catalog. And so this feels like it's gonna be part of that as well if you have that add-on. Um, always important to note that add-ons do affect the availability of certain features. So whenever you see anything to do with data lineage or data catalog, unless it's the metadata API, you need an add-on in order to access those features. Okay, let's go to the native lightning web component for Tableau. So. Lightning web components are from the Salesforce world. They're sort of a bespoke uh, HTML web component that works really, really well with Salesforce. It makes it easy for developers to work with the Salesforce platform. And so what we have here is a native web component for Tableau. So you can go ahead and embed Tableau visualizations inside of Salesforce using this Lightning web component. And the benefit here is that 
you can actually start to integrate Salesforce and Tableau more closely. It's kind of felt like all of the embedding API capabilities that we've been getting from the last couple of months has actually been leading up to this sort of capability. They needed to sort of implement all the little bits, personal access tokens, all of that stuff needed to come together to enable this. And so you can actually see that they do call out connected apps, trusted tokens, all inside of this uh, particular uh, announcement. So this is really nice to see. I'm really excited to see what comes of this. Um, on-demand access. So this is part of the embedding story. Now, embedding is just on a march. I'm making a video series about this, so be sure to check that out very soon over the next few weeks. Um, in that sort of topic and domain, on-demand access has been a hugely requested feature. The context here is, let's say you're building an application. Let's say you're a bank. Tableau likes to use a bank as an example. And you want to build a, a, a platform where people can come in and check their balances. And you want to use Tableau as the visualization uh, tool to visualize that data. Well, what you don't want to do is to go and buy licenses for all your customers, because what if they never log in? What if they uh, don't actually use uh, the service? The other thing is um, you might actually be on something called a usage based licensing system. So there is an ability to buy uh, tokens and embedding has a capability to basically pay as you use. So you can buy a certain number of tokens up front and then it doesn't matter sort of how many people log on. You can essentially use up these tokens over a period of time. And so what you need to be able to do is say, hey, I'm going to give all 12,000 people access to this system, but I don't know when they're going to turn up and I don't know when they're going to sign in. But when they sign in, I want you to go ahead and create a username, uh, some credentials for them, and then let them log in and see what they're supposed to see all in that one step. And so what that this is actually doing is enabling that. When a user then goes to log in, it automatically licenses them and makes sure they're allowed to see what they're allowed to see. It passes through any sort of permissions and uh, general things that your application needs to control. And then you have the availability to just go ahead and let them into your platform. So really, really a useful feature. Um, the embedding API NPM library. This is one of these uh, web development terms, but I'll try and simplify it for you. NPM stands for Node Package Manager, I think. I think it's Node Package Manager. And what essentially you can think of it as is a way of bundling the necessary code you need to run a certain set of capabilities in your application. Let's say I want to build a clock. I don't want to have to, you know, go and do the maths to figure out the time, right? Maybe I want to connect to a, uh, a computer or a satellite that has the time. What I can do is I can go get a package that knows how to call the API for this particular satellite or clock. And I can include that in my application so that my application always knows the time. That's a very simple example. What they're doing here is taking the embedding API and creating a library of tools. And what you can do is actually use this library. You can call up these libraries like components. And these components allow you to quickly and more easily build capabilities on the embedding platform. Now, the nice thing about this is that the package management is all done for you. You don't have to sort of go and find, oh, I'm on the right version of this. Which version of the API am I using? Am I using embedding API version 3.5, 3.6? The package manager should really sort of tie all these in and then also allow you to lock into a specific version. So you really tightly control the experience. And so that's, that's sort of a really, really good capability. And the additional benefit here is that the um, API can be pulled from a CDN. So you can go ahead and call it as you would do with any other package and it'll be pulled down and available in your application. So a much easier way to deploy um, uh, the embedding API. And the nice thing is, I think they do mention about um, applications, applications on premise uh, without the option to connect to CDN. So you can essentially take this package and include it in your application without needing access to the internet, which a lot of things kind of <laughs> come with the basic assumption that you do need, especially if you're um, a Tableau Cloud customer. So yeah, um, really good set of capabilities. If you know more about this and I'm sort of murdering this description, let me know in the comments below. Okay, the next feature is stratified sampling in prep. Now, stratified sampling is one of these things where I'm always like, I bet you people don't even know this is a problem and this is gonna fix it for them. So when you open up Tableau Prep, by default, it samples over a certain number of records. It basically doesn't load all the data in. And when you're working on certain data sets, this can actually affect the spread of data that you get inside of the way you build your flow. And so you get the scenario where you build a flow, you think you've solved all the problems, you hit run, the full data set comes through and actually you discover more problems because something you designed isn't quite working for the specific subset that you were using when you built the flow because of sampling. 
What stratified sampling allows you to do is it essentially allows you to pick a field and it will use that field to, I guess, better proportion the way it samples. So it kind of uses that field to say, hey, I'm designing my workflow around this column. This is really the absolute sort of um, you know, most important level of grouping in my data set. I want you to pick a representative sample of data using this grouping. And that's essentially what this is doing. So it's a really nice feature. Um, I'm glad this is coming in. Most people probably won't know this is going to help them, but it's a great option to have in there, especially if you're working on data sets. I kind of wish it was default. I kind of wish Tableau just figured out the best field to use and just went for it, you know, <laughs> figure out the level of detail and just use this as a way of sorting things out. I'm sure something like that already happens, but nonetheless, really, really nice. Okay, fill down and running calculations. So multi-row calculations were added in the previous release of Tableau. In this release, they're adding a few more options to fill down and essentially do running calculations. What I loved about this feature when it was launched is that it's got this nice, beautiful interface, and I like that they're adding more capabilities to it. Another example of something that I think this should have all come in one go in this release rather than being the last release, uh, because in real terms, um, when you want this feature, you kind of want the full gamut of what it can do. But hey, um, in this particular instance, I think this is an exception because even the previous set of features delivers value out of the gate. Next up, set a header and data start row for CSV and text files. Again, another enhancement for prep. It feels like prep is starting to sort of edge a little bit closer to all tricks. I don't think it's anywhere near uh, sort of uh, taking all tricks market share or anything like that. I just do think it's going to make those all tricks use cases a little bit more difficult to justify because all the sort of ground level capabilities can just be done in prep anyway. Um, set header and data start row for CSV slash text files. And um, this is a nice feature. It's kind of an expectation really for CSV and text files, just being able to choose the row you start from. Um, but it's finally here. And so we're going to be able to use this. Okay, the next feature is write data sets to data cloud from Tableau Prep. Now, this is an interesting one because of course, Salesforce are pushing Salesforce data cloud, Tableau, Genie, CDP, all these things. I never understand what they mean. But at least for now, you can use Tableau Prep to push data to the data cloud. In real terms, I don't know what that means. Um, it does suggest here there's an ingestion API connector. I think this specifically allows you to pull to certain objects inside of Salesforce. But honestly, I don't know enough about Salesforce yet to be able to talk about this, but that's definitely something we're going to try and address long term. Still working my way through all those uh, knowledge bits and bobs that I need to kind of get through. But Salesforce is dense and Salesforce is a very complicated platform, especially if you approach it as like an analytics uh, person if you're coming from the world of Tableau and you're trying to understand Salesforce. There's just a ton of things where you're basically sifting through marketing terminology rather than actual sort of core features. So, um, yeah, that's that's just something to be aware of. Okay, virtual connections support for all connectors in Tableau. This is nice. So they've been slowly adding capabilities to virtual connections. What this means is that they are pretty much done adding all of the capabilities that I think you can access through the web edit features. So the connectors for OneDrive, Apache, Spark, Cloudera, Cloudera Hadoop Hive, the Datarama, Dreamio, all of these have been added along with a list of other ones. I'll do a separate video on this because there's been a few virtual connections additions in the last release and in this release. So I'll kind of round up everything that we've got so far, maybe do a 2023 update for virtual connections. Containerized bridge for Linux. So what does this mean? Um, you can basically make your Tableau architecture more streamlined with support for Linux and deploy Tableau Bridge within a container in Linux. Now, containers are an interesting concept in uh, computing. If you take your computer as an example, um, it's basically right in front of you, you can always access it. You, let's call that a bare metal, it's physically in front of you. The next concept is you take your computer and then you chop it up into bits, but then you say each of those bits are a small bit of your computer. In that case, you could take your laptop and say it's in six bits, you could say you have six virtual machines they all run on one machine, one physical machine. So bare metal, one machine, uh, virtual machine, uh, six computers. Okay. A container is when you take an application and you put it inside of a box, typically inside of a virtual machine, and it has no awareness of anything else. Okay. So it knows that it's running on Windows or it knows that it's running on Linux, but it doesn't have any concept of any other application that it could be running on. 
What's the value of this? Well, when it breaks, you can just replace it. You can just set up more and you can in fact take the exact same settings and put it in another virtual machine or do, it, do something else with it. The nice thing as well, though, is because it's not aware of anything else, you can actually run multiple containers on a specific virtual machine, which makes it much more portable. And it means that you can manage your virtual machines and your physical hardware separately from how your applications work. You could update, let's say, your operating system without really worrying too much about the containers and the applications that are running on that system. So it just sort of modularizes things and it makes it easier for IT professionals to manage infrastructure in a more sort of a flexible way. And so um, being able to run Tableau Bridge in a container on Linux is actually a pretty good capability because it means companies can do a couple of things. Firstly, it's Linux, which means you don't have to pay for a Windows license just to keep Tableau Bridge running. And then secondly, the container is the preferred method because again, containers are just a little bit more flexible and portable. Okay, the next update is actually quite useful. Bridge support for embedded data sources. Now make connecting your data easier with bridge enhancements. Um, Tableau Bridge now supports embedded data sources and published data sources. You might think, what on earth does this mean? Well, when you go from Tableau Server to Tableau Cloud, Tableau Bridge is what you use to update data sources that sit within your firewall that need to be pushed to Tableau Cloud for availability in workbooks and other data refreshes. Until now, you couldn't do that with embedded data sources. An embedded data source is simply a data source that only exists inside of a workbook. It is not separately published. And so what that means is that when companies were going from Tableau Server to Tableau Cloud, they'd get this sort of painful awakening that their embedded data sources would no longer be supported. And so you'd have to work out a whole new data flow to get data sources stood up on side of Tableau Cloud. So inside of Tableau Cloud. So this update me means that essentially the effort required to migrate from Tableau Server to Tableau Cloud goes down. Unfortunately, though, you'd have to go to this release as soon as it's launched to realize that benefit. So in real terms, in two years time, this benefit will actually come to life. Um, an existing content requiring bridge can now be migrated as is rather than converting embedded data sources to publish ones. It takes a whole load of effort. It seems like a feature that's been designed to make migrations easier rather than a feature that's been designed to bring parity. That's sort of how it's being framed here. Um, but yeah, a nice feature. I think a lot of people doing uh, uh, server to cloud migrations will appreciate this. Activity log enhancements. The activity log has been the place where Tableau has been adding capabilities to allow you to see what's happening from your Tableau service perspective or Tableau cloud perspective. Think of it as a really detailed auditing capability. They've added a hundred types of usage events to the activity log, including access, create, update, and delete events across all content types. So that's basically, if you take each of those and you split them up, there's probably 20 things in each and you've got them all covered through the activity log. I need to do a video on a whole range of activity log. This is sort of the release where I realize I've got so many small technical bits that have been accumulating over a while that I've not covered and I should probably cover them in one go. Admin insights, tokens, uh, data source. So this is a strange one. When I saw this the first time, I sort of thought, thought, hey, why do we not get the workbook as well? But in essence, admin insights is a data source uh, and what they're adding is a tokens data source, a specific data source that tells you about your access tokens and how they're being used. It also has uh, OAuth client tokens and OAuth database tokens. So all of your tokens will sit in one place, tell you when they're being used, when they're expiring. I hope you get this dashboard with it. I hope you don't have to build that out of the gate because this dashboard looks useful, but I'm also certain people will be able to build better ones. So if you're sitting out there thinking of a good workbook that you could build, this would be a great one to kind of get stuck into. Suspend extract refreshes for inactive data sources. Oh God, this is like one of those low hanging fruits that I'm glad they've solved. Um, if an extract refresh is running and no one's using the data source, why is it running? <laughs> it's one of those things where if you do an audit of Tableau Server, every Tableau Server has a certain number of workbooks that sort of meets this criteria. So thank goodness this is being enabled. I think you might be able to control um, when a data source is labeled as inactive. I think there's a there's either a variable that you can sort of apply or there might be a way of um, sort of toggling that a little bit. So. I'm not sure if you have control of that through something like TSM or if you're able to set a threshold, but that would be really good to see once the features launch. I'll have a look around on that feature once we get it through and see what we can do. Auto save enhancements. So 
Autosave is a capability that allows you to save. It is only web edit specific. Don't get tricked into thinking this is coming to desktop, but you now get more support from Tableau Autosave to improve productivity. The latest enhancement Autosave automatically modifies Wait, this is weird. Automatically saves modifications made while editing a new, never published workbook to a draft. So basically, as soon as you open a workbook, it's automatically saving and they're saving it to a draft, which means you no longer need to publish your work immediately to be able to get the ability to save draft, essentially. So this is really nice. Um, the update allows you to pick up where you left off conveniently. And this is great if you're working in the browser, because ultimately it means if your browser dies or your connection drops off, you've already automatically got like a backup that you can fall on. The login flow has been enhanced. Uh, essentially, this has been redesigned. It's a little bit nicer and a learn more link for the site URI has been created. I had to create a video on what the site URI is because when Tableau Cloud kicked into action, uh, lots of people didn't know what their URI was because it got removed from this login page that was typically there back in the Tableau days. So um, this is now uh, been updated to sort of make it a look nicer, look smoother. Uh, whoever this is uses LastPass. You can see the LastPass thing logging in. I should really be first photoshopped out. It's free advertising for LastPass. But anyway, um, uh, really nice to see this. What I think would be nicer is that if Tableau just centralized all its login, um, there's, there's currently, I currently have four Tableau logins and they did sort of merge them all. But the problem is, is that because they've had years and years of people using separate accounts for separate things, it was an absolute mess. So I still just keep everything in separate accounts because it's easier than trying to merge everything into one, especially for people who have a work profile and a personal profile and are trying to figure out what to do. And also if you have an email tied to Tableau Cloud, unfortunately it's so hard to move things off that account that it just becomes impossible. So um, yeah, never, never really sign up to anything that you wanna keep personally using your work account. Sign up using your personal account and those can move with you, including tableau.com as well. So just bear that in mind. Okay, uh, editable viz all text is now in desktop. This is not really new. This is a feature coming from web edit to desktop. So this is nice. The ability to edit this in desktop is now available. Um, command cancellation. This is one of those things where if you clicked cancel when a data source was updating, it wouldn't actually cancel. It would do some other weird thing. And so what they've actually done is made this do what it says. And um, it also has an ability to pause and uh, enable auto updates as well baked in. So they've kind of done everything you'd want to do when you hit this feature. So you don't get it spinning again automatically as soon as you go to load the workbook, which is kind of nice. Accelerators are getting more enhancements. They keep tweaking this sort of design. And I think they're trying to make them more and more prominent. You can kind of see it's sort of slowly creeping up. You've got quick start and it's taken up half the page now. I'm sure very soon you'll let you'll load up a, a start page and I'll ask you what do you want to do and it'll say here are three accelerators ready to go and off you go. Uh, I think that's pretty much what's well, what, where this is heading. It's um, it's pretty obvious to me, but hey, let's well, let's wait and see where uh, Tableau end up with this. Um, if we go to the next one, table fonts for web authoring. Uh, this is interesting because obviously web edit's still catching up with desktop. Fonts were one of those areas where it's behind and now you can edit the fonts for a table inside of web edit, which is kind of handy. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, that's what RHEL stands for. It says so right here, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, version 9 is now supported for Tableau Server. So you can now uh, update to that version of Linux or put server on that version of Enterprise Linux. Dynamic parameters in table extensions. So table extensions are, to me, this is this is easily the um, the most uh, capable part of Tableau that I think people can use ChatGPT for. Because previously you really needed to understand Python and Art in order to interact with table extensions. I now believe it's possible in ChatGPT to basically code your way through this and feel like you know what you're doing, dangerously obviously, um, and build some really incredible capabilities. Um, what you need to do is understand how the table extensions capability works, but I'll definitely do a video on this because I've had great success trying a few things out that I just never really had the balls to try before. So I'm really interested to see how this works and so we can kind of push on with this and, and see where it ends up. But when you have dynamic parameters inside of table extensions, 
what you can essentially do is dynamically change what the table extension is doing. And that means you can change the query, you can change the call being made in Python and R, and you can also change the way in which you're interacting with the dashboard. So because these can be part of a data model, by changing the parameter, you can also do things like change the relationships and how they work. So that's a really, really nice uh, set of features. But that's it, that's 23.3. I'm not gonna lie, it does feel a little lighter than usual. I think Tableau GPT and Tableau Pulse are stealing a lot of oxygen for upcoming releases. All the efforts going into making that work, making that ship, I'm sure Tableau just pivoted tons of dev work towards AI. There's probably a company-wide memo. If it's not AI related, I don't wanna hear about it or something like that. And um, But also we can see through these little, little features here and there that there is something there. What I like to do is go to desktop like this, and I just like to look at this and say, hey, what's new in desktop? There's a little less, that's appreciated. If I go to Tableau Cloud, there's a little bit more. And so what you start to realize is that yes, Tableau really is heading more towards the cloud. I just don't understand how anyone can not agree that Tableau Cloud will be the best version of Tableau to use because that is the version that gets uh, just a boatload of releases every year. And um, Tableau Server is getting a bunch of features in this release that were also available in the previous release. Remember, this is the server release, so it's actually available in this release. Um, it'll get all the previous uh, features, not all of them, because some of them are cloud specific, as well as these releases. So this will actually sort of make its way to Tableau Server now, as well as everything in the previous release. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. It's been uh, really good to kind of go through these features. Dreamforce is next week. Look out for that. I'm pretty excited to see what Tableau has in store for us at the Dreamforce keynote, the Tableau Dreamforce keynote, as well as Salesforce, of course, and what they have to say about everything. Um, I'd, I'd maybe do a reaction on the Salesforce keynote and the Tableau keynote just to see what they have to say about AI and ChatGPT, but I don't really know much about it. So we'll try and figure out what's going on there. And I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.